offshore kayak fishing, you want to give it a shot. But man, them Hobies are expensive. Those pedals cost a hell of a lot of money. Old Town Predator PDLs, $3,500 Hobie PAs, $3,000 Outbacks with tax. Oh, but now they're dropping some more budget ones. $1,400 Passport. You got like a $1,300 Pelican. You got the Pescador Pilot for around fifteen, sixteen. dollars Still too much money. And you don't even know if you like kayak fishing. Can you sit for eight hours if you really want to fish all day? Let's just cut it back. Hey, can you fish for four or five hours sitting down? Can your stomach handle it? Can your back handle it? Can your butt handle it? Those are things that you don't find out until you're the one out there. No one can tell you if you can take them. So before you go ahead and drop 3000 on an Outback, or what I did, I paid 1500 I got that used. Maybe you want to go cheaper. Why don't you even try paddles? If you can handle paddling, you will definitely can handle paddles. I went about as cheap as you can get to make sure before I invested big money into this, that it's what I liked and I was gonna enjoy the hell out of it, which I did. I ended up paying $100 off of OfferUp for a lifetime Tahoma 10 footer in lima green trick daddy dunk green. And I am gonna show you guys the rundown of what makes a budget kayak budget for fishing. Absolute very first mod that I did was to add rod holders. This kayak was about as boongy as you can imagine. It was just plastic with a plastic chair with a big hole that had no mesh, no nothing. It was just a hole into the hole. That was the kayak. I needed rod holders. I'm gonna fish on this thing. This is gonna help me troll. This is gonna help hold my rod. Next, I needed somewhere to keep as a center console at the heart of my kayak. A lot of research, milk crate milk crate that I use to hold my bucket, my aerator, aka your live well, a bait net. Because you don't want to be sitting on this chair in rough, bumpy water, reaching around, trying to catch that last pilchard or ballyhoo that's zipping around in there and you can't grab them. That's not fun. Have a bait net, spend the five bucks at Bass Pro. This was one of my favorite additions to this whole thing, was to invest in these nets I found these on eBay. They're like $10 each. And there are big bags. The, the measurements of a kayak, they come with copper rings, which you can see, little green, like fight jewelry. And you throw your waterproof planos. I can throw yellows in here. I can throw two yellows. I can throw three yellows. I can throw two blues. I can throw four reds. If you know the Plano waterproof series, then you know what I'm talking about. If not, let me know in the comments. Piece of foam. Why do I need a piece of foam on my milk crate? I don't like to lose my freaking bridle needle. When you're done bridling your bait, you stick it there. If you don't know how to bridle, ask me in the comments. We'll do a video. Also, stick hooks, stick rigs. You need everything quick and you need everything at your hands. Throw in three extra rod holders because I like to run a four rods on my kayak. I'm trolling one high, one deep. I have a vertical jig rod here. I have an artificial plug rod here. If I see tuna busting at the surface, I'm grabbing this plug rod, I'm slinging it. If I'm marking deep, I'm dropping a jig as I am trolling top water and then one deep with a lead. In the middle is my cage gaff. You can use a J gaff, a cage gaff. This costs almost nothing to make. If you want to learn how to make your own cage gaff, just let me know. Very, very easy. Pretty fun if you want to go deep into it. Take off the top. And this thing is gonna annihilate whatever you poke. In this video that I'm gonna show you of my first offshore trip on this kayak, you'll see it in action. Moving on to the front. Extra tackle bag, extra lit, extra rigs, extra lures. Definitely take plenty of water. You do not wanna dehydrate. Take more water than you need. If you wanna be really smart, take frozen water in bottles as ice and a couple that are not frozen for drinking. But guess what? That ice is gonna go melting throughout the day. Not only will it keep your snacks and your food cold, but it serves as backup drinking water. Frozen water bottles are a great idea. Throw on the GoPro mount. I threw wine with double-sided tape in the front. You can put your mounts anywhere. I'll be doing a video of the best ways to record your kayak trips with several, several mounting points for your GoPro. Moving on down. This is the heartbeat. 
This is your fish finder. This is your GPS. This is a Garmin Striker 4. This is the best bang for your buck GPS fish finder combo you can get. Highly, highly recommend it. It got me going. I invested in this rail that I mounted with rivets. I bought a rail blazer tray. I mounted it on there. When I'm done for the day, take it off. I mounted this little eyelet, some string. If I flip, it's held on to a zip tie. I'm not trying to lose anything. Moving back down, rail blazer rod holder for the front. You can add two if you want. I only added one. You don't want too much stuff going on, but you do want a rod in the front so that a rod holder in the front for when you're landing a fish, you have somewhere to stick your rod rather than laying it down. Or if you're tying knots and you need to have some tension, you're tying an FG from over here, you stick this here, you make your tension, you tie your FG. Moving into the hatch, this is what you get with a $100 kayak. You get air. But my battery for the head unit, which goes on to that Velcro. And my transducer foam came with the Garmin. You can make that out of duct seal as well works efficiently I've done them both other thing I recommend that you take on your kayak when you go out there whether it's your first time or your 10,000th time is this and it's not what you think this is what's gonna pump out water from your hole when you start taking on some water from maybe it crashed over the bow maybe God forbid you have a crack in your hole Hobies are notorious for cracking right around their pedal area and you might not know until you're already out there. Me personally, I frequently am opening up my center hatch on my Hobie in my lifetime, making sure that I'm good on that because you never know. You probably slapped it on the ground a little too hard getting it out of your car or your truck. Small hairline crack, water will fill it up quick. This will get rid of the water at least enough time so that you can get back in. Keeping things extremely cheap, very cheap, keeping it cheap. Took some metal, twisted it around. I got me a flagpole holder. They don't want to spend 50 bucks on a flagpole kit. Maybe I will, but wasn't ready when I started. They didn't know if I was gonna even like this. Bent some metal around, sticking out of a four foot stick. Put a flag on there. Bright colors, red, orange, yellows. Even this one has a little too much white. Might look like glare or a white cap in the distance and the boater might not see you just quite enough until it might be too late. Hopefully it's not. None of this stuff I'm showing you matters if you don't get home safe. And there's two things, two things you need to invest if you're going offshore in a kayak. Bite the bullet, buy once, cry once, live to fish another day. You might lose your kayak, boat might hit you, you might leave a drain plug, you might have a cracked hole, didn't know about it till you were in 100 feet. There's one thing you need to buy. Most of my experienced kayakers already figured this out. I'm talking about having a life vest. This is the most important piece of kayak fishing. Screw everything else. Screw the fish. Screw it all. If you don't get home safe, if you don't get home in one piece, what was it worth? Spend the money. This was more than my freaking kayak, guys. And it hurt to buy it, but I don't regret it. Not only do I feel safe in this thing, it is extremely comfortable. This is designed for kayak fishing. It has excessive pockets. So many pockets, I don't use half of them, but you know what, they're there if I need them. I keep my, you wanna keep a knife close. In here I keep my cell phone in a Ziploc bag. Over here I keep my wallet and keys in a Ziploc bag. Rubber bands for rigging bait, rubber bands for dropping leads. I have my cutters all in my hands. And then in here, I don't even know what's in there, I'll be honest with you. Oh yeah, a whistle. You gotta have a noisemaker, that's what it is. Have a rape whistle, because when the ocean decides to rape, even that might not save you. But I tell you what will, a high quality VHF. Don't cheap out on your VHF like I did. I bought a VHF, pretty cheap. It fell in some water sitting in here, and it died on me in the middle of a fishing trip. Sent it back to this company, they sent it back to me. I went out the next trip, I flipped, and guess what happened? It died on me again. I haven't had problems with this ICOM. IC M25. It's still affordable. This was more than my kayak right here. But you know what? If you're in the trouble, this will get you out. This is what's gonna tell the Coast Guard you're in trouble. That's gonna give them the coordinates that you might, if you have the time, get those coordinates, you radio to them, they'll be there to help you. If you don't, or if you see a boater, try to see if he has his VHF on. Maybe he can just come and help you. Hopefully he's one of the good ones.
There's not many of them when it comes to kayaking guys, okay? As Johnny Cash said, this can quickly get you into trouble, but it can't get you out. This combination, this will. I don't care if you use Shakespeare rods while you're kayak fishing offshore. Don't cheap out on what's gonna save your life. And that's the rundown of my budget offshore kayaking setup. Most people would say, bro, you're crazy going out in a 10 footer. I did it anyway, and you know what? I had a good time doing it. I learned a lot on this hoopty before I upgraded to a Hobie, but I still use this one to the day. Um, enough of me talking. All of this costed around 500 bucks, the whole setup. I'm talking from GPS to kayak to life vest to radio to the crate. Try to get as much stuff for free as you can. You can get a milk crate in the garbage. You can get a piece of foam anywhere. You can make a bridal needle. You can, you know, look for things used. Just don't cheap out on safety. To keep from losing your stuff, invest in some leashes. I got one for my rod, each rod. These are for the rods. I have a leash for this, but it's on my Hobie. Um, you know, you can just use paracord. I really like coiled style so that it retracts when I'm not using it or don't need it stretched out. Eyelet, this is tethered. GoPro, zip tie, tethered. And if I had rods back here, they're tethered. There's the clips. Um, flipping does happen. And something else that kept me back from kayak fishing like I wanted to was I don't have a pickup truck. I don't have roof racks. I don't have nothing. And you know what? I'm not going to spend 300 on a roof rack when my kayak was 100 bucks. Cheap solution. This isn't the best solution, but it will work. Put a dent in my hood. I'm sorry. I put a dent in my roof. A couple of scratches, but it got me fishing. A foam noodle. You get this for a dollar or two. You stick some PVC in that foam noodle to help distribute the weight. You run a strap through that PVC through your car. Open your doors, run it through. Don't don't strap your car door shut, okay? Open your doors, run it through, get these anchored in there. And then you throw this hunk of plastic on the top of these noodles, run your strap over your kayak, go through your car again, and you're ready to go. You'll see in the photos coming up. That's all the preparation. Now it's time to get out there in the next video with some live action.